I think it would probably surprise absolutely no one to think that I'm a geek. And that I spent a fair bit of time paying attention to a wide variety of superhero movies and superhero stories over my lifetime. When I was a younger kid, I really loved Superman. You know, and I watched the Superman movies, and I collected Superman comics, particularly during a whole run where they actually killed Superman at the hands of a villain named Doomsday. I really enjoyed Batman in kind of my early teen years when uh, Tim Burton was releasing a series of Batman movies through the 90s. Uh, as I got older, I definitely followed the stories of characters like the X-Men and, and the Spider-Man movies. But what's interesting is over the last 15 years, these superhero movies have taken on a bit of a different character. Uh, beginning with the release of Batman Begins in 2005, which taught Hollywood they can make superhero movies that don't suck. Uh, alongside you know, the last 15 years with the Marvel Cinematic Universe and you know, Iron Man and Thor and Captain America and the Guardians of the Galaxy and, and all these different stories that have been told. Now, what is it that's so compelling to us about these superhero movies? Well, I'd say that there's a few things. You know, one, these are movies that tend to get produced with a bit of an epic flavor to them. You know, secondly, I think a lot of us, at a certain point in our childhood, we pretended that we were superheroes. And it speaks to, I think, something innate in the human heart. The idea that we look around at the world and wish things were different. And superheroes are the ones who can actually do something about it. And I think thirdly, in a lot of ways, we look at these superhero stories and we recognize that their, their origins, where they've come from, is often difficult. I mean, think about how many of the superheroes that we know and love, their parents are dead. I mean, Iron Man's parents are dead. Superman's parents are dead. Spider-Man's parents are dead. Batman's parents are dead. And this background, like I say, it, it not only shapes them, but it shapes some of their qualities. You know, one of the notable things about Batman is because he saw his parents shot in a mugging gone wrong, Batman refuses to carry guns. Spider-Man, because he himself is poor, well, he's often willing to stop and deal with, you know, the, the woman who's had her purse snatched or somebody with some small little crisis in the works, not just battling the great supervillains. And the reality is every one of us comes from a background and, and some of that background is trauma, is hard things that we've been through. But what makes these heroes heroes is the fact that they come across these backgrounds, they come across these experiences, and they choose to do something heroic anyway. The villains are the opposite. They often come from these tragic experiences, and they're so angry and they're so bitter that they try and, and do harm to others. Now, when you look at the Bible, the Bible begins with origin stories, with humanity's origin stories. And in much the same way as, as Batman's origin story or Spider-Man's origin story or our family backgrounds, they inform who we are, they inform who we are becoming. These biblical origin stories, these ones that we read at the beginning of the book of Genesis, is kind of the most famous of a number of origin stories you can find in the Bible. These particular stories speak to us about who we are, about what we're here for. They, they actually say some extraordinarily important things about what God's intention for us actually is. One of the running theories about the first story in the Bible, the, the story of the six days of creation when God rests on the seventh day, is that this story was first written during the Babylonian exile when Israel found themselves in Babylon, away from the promised land. And they were hearing Babylon speak of their own creation story, which it featured you know, a war between the gods and, and the death of a dragon. And all of creation exists in this rotting dragon's corpse, which I suppose sounds kind of cool. But there's also this idea that that dragons in old literature, dragons were always something that was evil or sinister. And one of the, the great claims of this Babylonian origin story was that human beings came from the dragon's blood, which means that we ourselves would be something that was sinister. Now you contrast that story with what we hear about in Genesis chapter 1 when God creates on each of the six days and he creates everything good. Except the day he makes people. Because on that day, he looks over all that he's made and he says, it was very good. You look at this story and you see the fact that we read that God makes things with a particular sense of order, with a particular plan, a particular purpose. Genesis 1 begins with the statement that the earth was, was formless and void. So in the first three days, God gives shape to time and space and land and water. And on the second three days, he fills all of these. Now, what is it that we pull from these sorts of things? Well, you know, number one, the idea that 
we are not, as some origin stories would claim, accidental or sinister or evil or bad. But dig a little bit deeper. And if there's a God who's behind the creation of everything, who creates with order, who creates with purpose, you know, the, the, the word we use is often intelligent design. Well, it means that God has created you for some purpose. You'll remember over the years, I, I've said to your class over and over and over again, each of us is a result of a thought of God. Each of us is willed and loved and necessary, meaning you are not an accident. God intended you to be here. Well, look at the created world in which we live. You take any species out of it, and it has a domino effect on the world around it. The same is true with you. If we pull you out of the story, well, it has a, a tremendous impact on the world around it. We also read something very specific about humanity at the end of the first chapter of Genesis, when God says, let us create man in our image after our likeness. So in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. One of the most fundamental things we believe about God is that God is a loving, life-giving family. We believe that God created us to be the same. And we see that played out in the second story of creation. Genesis chapter 2. When Adam finds himself in the garden, seeing all the other things that God has made, and yet still being a little bit lonely. There's kind of these, these original experiences Adam goes through. This original sense of loneliness. And then once Eve has been created, this original sense of unity, this original sense of innocence, in the line that says they could be naked and not ashamed. There's a lot to be found there. But I'll spoil the story for you, because in John 1, one of Jesus' 12 apostles writes that of Jesus, to those who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become the children of God. Because God's ultimate goal in creating everything, in creating us, in, in all that he reveals of himself in Scripture... God's ultimate purpose is to make us his family. To bring us into his family, into the covenant with him. And everything you'll see unfolded from that, that beginning chapter in Genesis to the end of time is God unfolding that bit by bit by bit. And it's those creation stories which, as I say, are a lousy science textbook which set the stage for that. Now, it's not a straight line from there to heaven because clearly we sometimes can be selfish and self-centered and, and, and make poor decisions. But it's clear God never gives up on us. And you need to know that just as you are someone who is here for a purpose, that you are someone who is good, that God's not going to give up on you either because God loves you tremendously because that is one of the things we learn again from the book of Genesis. We learn the beginnings of, of what St. John says when he says God is love. There's so much more that can be said to this. But just give, give those thoughts a few considerations. Why it's so important to hear that what he made was good. Why it's so important to see the order in which he creates these things. Why he, he doesn't drop us in isolation, but first of all, puts us into a family of our own, which can be more or less perfect as the case may be. But ultimately, he brings us into his own family.